Use that instead. Hi, my name is Michael and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to unlock the potential of your camera so you guys can get the most out of it. I'm going to be doing this by running through three basic things which are going to be shutter speed, aperture and ISO and how they work together. When you understand these three elements, you'll be able to take stunning photos of the night sky and you'll also be able to control the blurriness of your background, also known as the bokeh. Let's dive into shutter speed. Shutter speed is measured in seconds and it's basically how long your camera is open to let light in before it closes up and takes that image. Let's have a look at some really fast shutter speed and seeing what they're useful for. Let's say for example you are at an air show and you've got some stunt pilots doing their thing and you want to freeze that motion and even the propellers, you just want everything to be crystal clear. What you need to do is you need to turn up your shutter speed to the fastest possible setting which varies camera to camera. In this example it's about 1 over 4000 and that actually freezes that motion completely. If if you're shooting handheld, I'd recommend quite a fast shutter speed, but it all depends on the length of your lens and how steady you can hold your hands. Personally, I like to shoot at 1 over 160, just to make sure that my camera isn't shaky when I'm holding it, so I still get a nice, sharp, clean image. But if you want to play it safe, I'd turn it up to 1 over 200 or even higher than that if you still feel uncomfortable with it. With that being said, you can get some really cool results with a slowest handheld speed. This photo here was taken at 1 over 25, and the way you can actually take the shot yourself is if you find a good vantage point where you can see cars coming, what you do is you aim your camera at a car and you just follow it, and when that car hits the 90 degree mark, or it's completely side onto you, you wanna click down that shutter button. So you wanna take that photo, and if you've tracked the car well, the car should be sharp and in focus with the rest of the background blurred out. Now keep in mind, it's not an easy technique to do, and it'll take a bit of practice. So if you wanna play around with the settings, maybe use a slower or faster speed, you can do that. A friend of mine's taken a really great shot at one over 10 or one tenth of a second. So have fun with it, explore a bit. If we slow the shutter speed down even further, we can get some even more interesting results. At these speeds, you can get these silky smooth waterfalls or even take stunning photos of the night sky. You can leave the exposure even longer to start getting those beautiful star trails across the sky. It's important to note, the longer your shutter is open, the more light comes into your camera. And more light means a brighter photo. And I can already hear you saying, but Michael, how do I know how bright my photo is gonna be before I take it? And the answer is pretty simple. There's a small light meter in your viewfinder and on the back of your camera on the screen if you've got it switched on. This gives you an indication of how bright your photo is going to be. If the indicator is too far to the left, your image is going to be too dark and underexposed. If your indicator is too far to the right, your image will be too bright and overexposed. So it's best to try and keep the indicator as close to the middle as possible to make sure you nail that exposure every time you take a photo. We've all seen those beautiful portraits and, and macro photos where the subject is completely in focus and the background just melts away into a beautiful blur, which is called bokeh. The aperture controls that. The aperture is measured in f-stops, which is short for focal stops. So if you're shooting a landscape and you want everything to be in focus, you want that f-stop to be at least an f8, or that's what I usually shoot. That'll make sure everything in the frame is sharp and crisp. Lowering the f-stop starts making that beautiful background blur effect, that bokeh effect and it really helps your subject pop and stand out. It's also important to remember the way that aperture works is it actually controls the opening for how much light comes into your camera. So shutter speed is how long that is open for and the aperture is how wide it is open. So the bigger your aperture, the more is in focus, but less light is actually coming into your camera because the aperture actually closes up. So the smaller the aperture number, the wider that is open, the more light comes in, but less is in focus. And because it affects the light that's coming into your camera, it affects the brightness of your photo. So it's important to keep an eye on that little light meter. And the last thing I want to touch on is ISO. The ISO is basically how sensitive your camera is to light. The higher the ISO, the brighter your photo will be. But there is a trade-off. The higher you crank your ISO, the more noise and grain will be added into the photo. Each camera is a bit different, so how far you can push that depends on the camera you've got. A lot of cameras can shoot really well with higher ISOs, especially the newer ones. But if you've got an older camera, you might want to play a bit of trial and error and see how far you can push that ISO before you start getting too much noise and grain in your photo. A lot of cameras actually have an auto ISO mode, which is a great learning tool to help you understand and learn shutter speed and aperture without having to worry about the ISO at all. If you're just starting with photography or trying to lift your photo game, I would recommend learning shutter speed, aperture, and ISO like the back of your hand, and you'll be able to take almost any sort of photo that you want. It'll really broaden the variety of photos that you can take on your camera. 
Hopefully I've shown you a little bit about how you can get more out of your camera just by using the manual mode and how you can really broaden the variety of photos you can take by understanding and using these three settings. So get out there and just have fun and take some photos. See you all next time.